Hello, hello, and welcome or welcome back to my channel where I create videos that are all about how to grow your blogging empire. I'm going to show you five ways to earn your first dollar online. Crucially, I have tested every single one of these. I have earned at least one dollar with all of these methods. I have screenshots. I will share proof. Let's jump in. Number one, play games on your phone. Sounds too good to be true, doesn't it? I thought so too, which is what I discovered when I tested it. It's not actually too good to be true. You can earn money playing games on your phone. Um, what I learned is that you can't earn very much. So after about eight or nine hours of playing this like farming simulation game, I was able to earn $1.50 uh, in Amazon voucher gift cards. So that was great. Now, <sighs> admittedly, that's not a lot of money, but I wanted to start with this one because it is such a great entry point into thinking of yourself as the kind of person who earns money online. So the way it works is you download an app like Mistplay, which is the one that I used. Mistplay, what Mistplay is trying to do is earn money for its advertisers. And if you're a game developer, you go to Mistplay and you're like, hey, I wanna earn money through advertisers. How do I get people to come onto my game, play game, watch ads, let me earn money? And Mistplay is like, okay, well, let's pay them to do it. So you go on misplay, they give you a ton of different options, simulation games, strategy games, RPGs, all kinds of stuff. Pick the one you like, you download it, the more you play it, the more gems you get. This is such a good way to earn your first dollar online. As you can see here, I earned three 50 cent Amazon gift cards using this method. You can maximize your earnings just by playing a ton of different games. Pick one, pick five, try them all out, and see which one works for you. Number two, you can be a paid digital guinea pig. Now, this is one of my all-time favorite websites uh, called usertesting.com. I spent a lot of time here as a college student, and I went back there a couple of days ago, actually, to see if it still worked. And to my delight and surprise, it 100% does. The way it works is you create a profile. You say, hi, I'm Zuli. I live in Boston, Massachusetts. I earn about this much per month. This is what I do for a living. These are my interests and hobbies. User testing then provides a ton of tests for you to take. And you select one, you do a little like questionnaire to make sure you're a good fit. And then you go into the test and you basically have to do a screen recording of yourself, your phone. Sometimes they ask for you to record your face as well, talking through the test. So they'll ask you questions like, here is a, I don't know, like a navigation bar. What do you want to click on first? Like, what do you think about this option? Do you think that this option would be better? So you're just offering your feedback and the pay is really good for a 10 to 20 minute test. You'll get paid $10 directly to PayPal. No questions asked. I think uh, it goes into your account about a week later. So a slight delay. I've earned, I think over a hundred dollars with this method. I tested it just last week. Here's how much I earned in the last week alone. It's easy to get started but it's also the, one of the least profitable in the long term. It's very, very, very hard to scale this and tests are kind of limited. So for example, I'll often have to spend 10 or 20 minutes just doing screenings to make sure that I'm a good fit for a test. I'll go through five or six, get rejected, and finally the seventh will be a good fit for me. The best way to optimize this income stream is get started right away, fill out your profile as accurately as you can because this is gonna make it much less likely that you're gonna get false positives. Um, you're, gonna, you're not gonna screen out as often in the tests that you do get. Keep it open on your browser. It makes a little ding noise when a new test pops up that you can screen for. Download it on your phone as well. That offers more options. And be honest when you answer the questionnaire because if you answer wrongly and, and get in, then that will reflect negatively on you and you'll be more likely to be booted out of the platform. Basically, you are selling yourself, your time, your opinions in exchange for cold, hard digital cash. It's a great option for beginners. Number three, get people to click on links. Now, this one sounds a little dodgy. It sounds a little scammy, doesn't it? Um, but it's not. It's actually 100% legit. Imagine there's a company called Pet Supplies. 
um, Pet Supplies is like, hey, we have a really great offer. Um, and we want to get people on this landing page where we have this really cool offer, buy two, get one free cat toys. We're so confident that we're not even going to offer affiliate links. We're just going to pay you if you just get people to click on this link. The more people who click on this link, the more we'll pay you. But Pet Supplies doesn't have like a good platform for tracking this kind of stuff. So they go to a middleman. Um, for example, Adzi, or I used one called Get URL. Get URL says, okay, here is your custom link, uh, petsupplies.com forward slash Zuli or whatever. Um, I send it to you, I send it to my mom, I send it to my neighbor who likes cats. I get three clicks, boom, I get uh, three cents or you know, something like that. Per click, I will earn a very small amount of money. Um, usually this is like 10 cents, not, not a lot, <laughs> but it's something and the more, and you only have to get 10 people to click on your link and then you suddenly you've got your first dollar online. Now this is a little harder. You have to have some kind of an audience, whether that's literally just your friends, whether that's a YouTube channel, whether that's a blog or an email list that you've got. And you also have to be okay selling yourself a little bit. You have to be okay saying like, hey, I think this is a link that you should click on, knowing that you're gonna profit from people clicking on that link. That's a tough mindset. But you don't have to get anybody to buy anything. You don't have to sell anything. You just have to get people to click on a link, which is why it's number three on this list. So I used get URL. Here is a screenshot of my earnings. Um, I don't use them anymore because I have better ways of earning money, but um, there are some, and I think they might be out of business, but there are some other options you can use like shrink earn or adsy where you'll just get paid for basically shrinking links and posting them online and getting people to click. The best way to maximize this is posting the link in a lot of different places. And it's also good, I mean, ideally every PC where it would go viral, but it's also good practice to put these links in places where you think they'll get a lot of traffic. Number four is to go affiliate. This is a more common strategy that you'll probably already be familiar with. It's very similar to getting people to click on links, except instead of getting people to click on links, you get people to buy stuff based on your recommendations. This feels a little shady sometimes, but it doesn't have to. You have to think of it instead as a mutually beneficial, ugh, a mutually beneficial proposition. For example, my favorite affiliate program is bookshop.org. As an aside, I love bookshop.org. I think what they're doing is really cool. They sell books at a fair price to make sure that everybody gets the money that they deserve. Booksellers, readers, um, writers, everybody. I, that's why I, I love bookshop.org. They also have a pretty decent affiliate link. You get 10% of every sale you make. So if I see a $10 book and I'm like, hey, uh, Sarah, you would love this book. I think it's a really good fit for you. Here is the link to the book. Just so you know, it's an affiliate link. So if you do end up buying the book, I get 10% of, or I earn a small commission on whatever purchase you end up making. No pressure. Sarah's like, oh, you're right, Zuli. That is a great recommendation for me. Click buy. $1 goes into my account and $9 goes to the, you know, the author, the publisher, etc. And here's the proof of how I've done this. I mean, it's a small amount, but it's still money. So it's not scammy at all. It's mutually beneficial. You are benefiting because you earn, well, Sarah's benefiting because she's getting a great book recommendation from somebody she knows and trusts. Bookshop is benefiting because they're getting traffic they might not get otherwise. I'm benefiting because A, I know Sarah's gonna love that book that I recommended to her. And, and B, I earn a small amount of money for making that recommendation. The best way to maximize this is to niche down. You wanna build an audience that trusts your recommendations and is interested in things that you're gonna to suggest to them. The closer the niche fit, the more money you'll earn. So one of the reasons that I have only earned $2.70 with Bookshop is because I'm not really known as a book recommender. Um, people on Book Talk, Bookstagram, Book Twitter, whatever it's called, those people probably make a lot of money through affiliate links because they have built an audience that knows and trusts them and is familiar with them as a purveyor and recommender of books. It doesn't have to be books, by the way. It can be, God, pretty much anything. If you type in your niche plus affiliate program, you're bound to find something. And if you really don't niche down, there's always Amazon. Amazon has a much lower percentage because they're such a general broad seller, but you can get up to 10%. Literally, there are so many. Like type in your favorite brand and see if they've got an affiliate program. 
and start making recommendations. Note, you should always, always disclose when you are making an affiliate recommendation. It's the law. So it doesn't have to be weird or awkward. You can just say, hey, this is an affiliate link. So if you click on it at no cost to you, I earn a small commission just as a way to say thanks. That's it. Method number five. This is by far the hardest, but also by far the most rewarding with the greatest potential. Build an email list. If you've, if you've gone through options one through four, then I genuinely believe you are ready for option number five, which is to build an email list and sell stuff to your email audience that you have created. This is hard work. You have to really believe in yourself to be able to do this successfully. But once you do start to believe in yourself, once you start thinking, hey, I have a lot of ideas that are worth giving to people. I have a lot of ideas that I think are valuable. That is such an incredible place to be and you will easily make not just your first, but your 10,000th, $10,000 online. There's this uh, misconception that you need a huge email list to start making money, but it's not true. I started making money with my email list when I had fewer than a hundred subscribers because I had a targeted niche. I knew what I was selling and I knew that what I was creating was valuable to those people. So here's the easiest way to make your first dollar online using your own email list. One, build an email list. That's the first step. You don't need a lot of people. Really, you only need one subscriber if they're the right subscriber. You can do this by posting content onto any platform, Instagram, Twitter, Medium, YouTube, and saying, hey, if you wanna hear more from me, sign up to my email list. You can use ConvertKit, which is free for up to 1000 users. And like I said, I love it. Number two, find out a problem that your readers have. Maybe you know this because you've been doing a lot of research online. Maybe you have a conversation with somebody on your email list. Just think about what problems you are equipped to solve and what problems your readers have and where that overlap is. Step number three, build something. This can be an ebook. It can be a PDF. It can be um, it can be a service like a consulting call or a review of somebody's work and you can price it literally as low as one dollar. You'd be surprised at how many people will say yes. And that is step number four is just to market it. Let people know about your thing that you're selling. Let them know why they should care. Let them know what kind of problem it's going to solve and what kind of great life they're going to have after they solve that problem. Remember, you are not here because you want to make money. I mean, you are, but you're also here because you want to help them. That's got to be crucial. That's got to be the underlying need behind you wanting to make money online is you want to you want to help people in some way. And that's the best way to maximize it. You ever really need it. If you go into this with a scammy mindset or like, a, I just want to try to make as much money as possible mindset, readers can tell. So here's a screenshot showing you that, I mean, these are just a couple of sales I've made over the last couple of weeks. I think I've made over $10,000 altogether using ConvertKit, but because there's no middleman, it's just you, your product and your audience, the potential to scale and grow your income this way is huge. Want to earn your first dollar online? These five ways are great for you to start. Start just by playing games. Literally just get into the idea that you can make money online by selling your time by playing games. Then try giving some, some feedback on these user testing websites. Then get people to click on a link. Then get people to buy on something based on a link you send them. And finally, get people to buy from you directly. This kind of graduation will help it, will help you make your first dollar online more than one way more than one time until you get to not just your first, tenth, but actually hundredth or thousandth dollar. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the next video.